In 1966, MIT computer scientist Joseph Weizenbaum introduced ELISA, a program designed to simulate conversation using simple language reflection, much like a virtual text-based psychotherapist on a digital machine. ELISA would transform user statements into questions, prompting users to elaborate on their feelings. Even though Weizenbaum's intention was to show the limitations of machine conversation, people were engaging in long, deep and private conversations with a program that was only capable of reflecting users' words back to them and the most interesting incident during the the interaction with Eliza involves Weizenbaum's secretary asking him to leave the room so she could have a private conversation with the program. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me... Despite knowing that Eliza was just a computer program, she felt that her interaction with it was personal and meaningful enough to warrant privacy. Now this unexpected emotional attachment led Weizenbaum to spend the rest of his life warning about the excessive dependency of AI in society. The conversational program was named after the fictional Eliza Doolittle from a play from 1913 called Pygmalion and at the time of its creation, Eliza was not referred to as a chatbot and the term chatbot itself was not coined until mid-1990s. Eliza method was simple. Using Using keywords to generate responses and simulate conversations by recognizing the patterns that was generated by users' inputs. For example, if someone mentioned that their friend made them angry, it would identify the specific keyword in the phrase and could respond with, why do you feel angry? Now initially, people interacted with Eliza through a typewriter connected to an MIT system and the program would look for keywords in the input and generate questions based on those keywords. This simple interaction led to deep emotional engagements, much to ways and bounds surprise and concern. He had intended to demonstrate the superficiality of machine understanding, but users found comfort in the program, leading to the so-called Eliza effect. The Eliza effect refers to the human tendency to falsely attribute human-like intelligence, emotions, and thought processes to AI systems, even when they are quite simple and lack true understanding and this phenomenon has continued to surface widely up to the present day. Now if Eliza didn't understood its users, why was it so relatable? Since its responses were built from the user's immediate text input, talking with Eliza was basically a conversation with yourself, something most of us do every day in our heads. Yet here was a conversational partner without any personality of its own, content to keep listening until prompted to offer another simple question and it was not that strange that people found comfort and catharsis in these opportunities to share their feelings. Weizenbaum believed that by explaining how Eliza worked he would remove its mystery and he thought that once the inner workings of a program were clearly explained, its magic would fade. However, people seemed more interested in continuing their conversations with Eliza than in understanding how it actually functioned which led Weizenbaum more intrigued. Eliza's success might lie in its simplicity, allowing users to project their thoughts and feelings. Weizenbaum believed that true understanding of human experience was beyond the reach of machines, as emotions like love and loneliness are deeply tied to our biological makeup. However, today's chatbot are much more complex, trained on vast amounts of data and capable of generating more sophisticated interactions. These advanced models like chat, GPT and Gemini reflect our behaviors and language patterns on a grand scale, raising questions about their influence on us. From influencing our online behaviors to curating the information we consume, interacting with large AI programs is already changing us and they no longer passively wait for our input. Instead, AI is now proactively shaping significant parts of our lives, from workplaces to everywhere with chatbots in particular, we use them to help us think and give shape to our thoughts. These interactions with AI not only reflect our online selves but also influence our behavior, impacting significant aspects of our lives and in fact this influence is narrowing our creativity and diversity in language and thought processes. The commercialization of AI brings other additional challenges unlike ELISA, which was an academic experiment and we all know that today's AI technologies are driven by profit. Weizenbaum's warnings about anthropomorphizing machines and relying too heavily on AI are more pertinent than ever and as we become lonelier, we become more vulnerable to these technologies. He has cautioned against the tendency to attribute human-like qualities to computers, emphasizing that they should not be confused with real human beings and these confusion could lead to a loss of human agency and judgment, especially as AI technologies began to play more prominent roles in society. Weizenbaum even has feared that AI could at some time reinforce oppressive structures rather than liberate humanity and when convincing chatbots become as common as the search bar on a browser, it might initiate a vast social psychological experiment with unpredictable and possibly tragic results. We are on the verge of a world filled with various chatbots and these AI implementations can offer immense benefits, 
such as advancements in science and more accessible education but we should not overlook the potential consequences. It's important to fully understand what we are creating and how they might reshape us before we become too dependent with these innovations. Thank you for watching. If you're curious about how Eliza looked back in 1966, you can find the online web application or find the GitHub repository through the links in the description below.